Hello and welcome to Revit Beginner Program. In the last episode, we learned about creating ramps using the ramp tool. We also created ramp material takeoff in the last episode where we learned that it's not possible to create a material volume of ramps automatically. The material area that we are going to get is also the gross area of all the surfaces of the ramp. But for generally for bill of quantities, you would need the top surface area, basically the floor area of your ramp. This is not possible to create automatically from Revit schedules. So what do we do? The alternate approach of creating ramps in Revit is to use floor tool. Today in this episode, we are going to learn about the trick of creating a ramp using the floor tool instead of the ramp tool. We'll also check if the quantities issue can be resolved if we create a ramp using the floor tool. Let's get started. In the last episode, we created a ramp that goes from ground floor all the way down to the basement floor level. We started at zero elevation from the ground. We stopped at a landing which was at minus 1.4 meters elevation. And then we went all the way down to minus 2.7 meters, which is basically our basement floor level. Today, we would like to create the, exactly the same ramp, but instead of using the ramp tool, we're going to use the floor tool. So let's go into the ground floor and let's create a floor. I'm going to use a structural floor I'm going to duplicate this type that I already have, concrete slab 6 inches. I'm going to duplicate that and call it concrete slab ramp. Let's use the pick lines tool because we already have the sketch of the ramp. But if you don't, you can always use these draw tools to create a sketch of your ramp. When you're working in pink line mode, make sure that you always trim all the lines so that they don't have any overlaps no open loops that looks great let's finish that currently this floor is at zero elevation from the ground floor and it is completely flat i'm going to hide my previous ramp so that we can see our floor very clearly when you select your floor you will have shape editing options using the modify sub elements you can edit either the edges or the points of your floor but before we make any changes to the elevation of my edges, we would like to create a landing here. How do we do that? Using the shape editing options, we can either add a point, add a split line, or pick supports if you have any. So in this case, I'm going to add a split line here. Let's go to the ground floor, choose add split line option, and create a line where we want our landing. Now if I go into my 3D view, I will see that I have two additional edges which I can control. Let's go to modify sub elements. Go to this edge which we would like to keep at minus 2.7 meters elevation. Now let's select all the edges and all the points situated at the landing area and change the elevation of all the points at minus 1.4 meters which is the elevation of our landing. Now we're going from zero elevation of from the ground floor to minus 1.4. And from minus 1.4, we are going down all the way to minus 2.7 meters. And we have created exactly the same ramp that we created using the ramp tool in our last episode. When we select this floor, you can already see that we can calculate area and volume of the total ramp that we just created. We can also go into our schedules and create a material take of our floor. Let's take the type of the floor, material area and material volume. And let's check whether we are able to calculate in a schedule or not. There we go. So we have concrete slab ramp type of floor, which has this much area and this much volume. You can always come back to your floor and in case if you would like to change any shape editing that we have done on our floor, you can select your floor and always come back and say reset shape. So it will come back to a flat floor that we initially created. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have, please press the like button, please subscribe, stay tuned and I'll see you in the next episode.